Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Chef. Hi, good afternoon. Sudhir. Good afternoon, Sarabjit, and good afternoon, Pavitra. For you Very good all afternoon, ma'am. Here as a part of the seminar, webinar. Extremely happy. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Pavitra, ma'am. Uh, hi, Sarabjit. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks. Good afternoon, Chef. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you for taking out a valuable time so that you could come and address the students on this very, very important topic today. Uh, good students. Uh, No audible, Chef. I'm audible to you. Your voice is very low. Volume is very low. How about now, Chef? Yeah, better, better. Okay. So good afternoon to everyone. I welcome you all in this webinar on the topic of millets, the forgotten food for the future. As the name suggests, millets are superfoods. They are rich in dietary fibers, proteins, minerals, and various vitamins. Yes, all our speakers over here will be elaborating on these facts, which I have just mentioned. Millets historically have been a very, very important part of human diet because of their uh, because of their properties but since the past century or so slowly the human civilization is moving away from millets and moving towards things like rice and wheat and other ingredients the united nations to emphasize the importance of millets has declared the year 2023 as the international year for millets that emphasizes the importance of millets to you. The United Nations wants to get rid of the world of hunger, as well as get rid of the other deficiencies which are found in human beings due to the loss of nutrients, okay, wherein they use, for, where they're using ingredients like rice or wheat. So without any further ado, I would like to hand over the forum to Ms. Sharajit. She is our first speaker for the day. Ms. Sarajit Lamba is an alumni of our institute. She has completed the PG Dietetics course from our institute in the year 2004-2006. That was the batch in which she studied in the college. After, completing, after completion of the course, she did join a lot of leading organizations in the industry. Namely, BARC, Sign Hospital, SR Mehta, Cardiac Hospital, and many, many more. Ma'am also frequently conducts workshops in schools wherein she focuses on awareness of nutritional choices. And this talk is focused more towards the kids because they are actually the future of our uh, civilization. Ma'am currently runs uh, her own dad consultancy by the name, The Gut Story. So, Sarabjit, ma'am, very welcome. Handing over the forum to you now. I'll be sharing the screen. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. Students, if you have any questions, you can ask the questions later on. We'll have a small Q&A session at the end of the presentation.
Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Thank you so much. Or would you be sharing the screen? Yeah. So, ma'am, should I go ahead? Yes, please. Thank you. So let us begin with understanding what are millets. So uh, the definition for millets is they are highly variable small seeded grasses that are cultivated throughout the tropics and subtropical region of mainly Asia and Africa. Millets have great economic health importance. They are gluten free. They have low glycemic index and are known as nutri cereals. These grains are used for food and for fodder throughout the globe. They are one of the oldest foods known to humans. Next slide, please. Yes, so uh, millets are divided into a group of three. They are categorized as big millets, small millets, and pseudo millets. So as the name suggests pseudo, pseudo means something falls, it does not belong to the original category. So uh, they are so called because amaran, but buckwheat, quinoa do not belong to Poetia family. They are from other uh, taxonomy, but they have nutritional values similar to millets. They are cooked in the same way as millets and they behave like millets. Hence, they are known as pseudo millets. Next slide, please. Thank you. Millets are old concept. Millets have been part of Indian diet for centuries. And during the Green Revolution around uh, 1965, 1965, 1966, these millets were cultivated, that, that was before the uh, pre-Green Revolution. They were cultivated in 36.9 million hectares. Whereas in 2016-17, it, it was declined to 14.72. And it further reduced by 2019 to around 12 million hectares. So these millets being rich, so, uh, rich in carbohydrates, protein, fibers, phytochemicals, minerals, and a lot of vitamins. The population was devoid of these grains, these millets, these seeds. And we could observe certain deficiencies like protein deficiency, vitamin A, iron deficiency, and other mineral deficiencies post, green, uh, post the Green Revolution. Hence, now it has been, uh, we have been realizing that yes, millets have a very important impact and a role to play in uh, the population nutrition and uh, combating the various deficiencies in population. Next slide, please. Yes, here are the nutritional values. Let us understand a few uh, nutrients in the millets and let's compare it to uh, the other grains like rice, refined wheat, and the wheat flour, whole wheat flour. So here, when we see the energy and the uh, carbohydrate column, the values seem to be very similar. So here, but then why, why do we talk about millets being nutri-cereals and being much more beneficial? Because the fiber content in the millet is higher. If you see the refined wheat flour has 2.7 grams in 100 grams of wheat flour and the available carbohydrate is 74.2. So that makes it high uh, on glycemic load. The glycemic index of refined wheat is high. That means that when you consume this food, the blood sugars increase rapidly and they drop uh, very soon. So this is not good for um, our systems, okay? And similarly, if you have a look at calcium, millets have a fairly good amount of calcium, iron again, and it is also rich in vitamin B. So let us have a graphical look. Uh, can I have the next slide? Yes. So here is the fat content of millets and that of the rice and wheat. If you can have a uh, pearl millet, that is 
bajra has the highest fat and this is good fat actually millets contain a very good profile of uh, fatty acids and pearl millet being highest other millets do have this good profile of fatty acids rice being uh, the milled rice being the lowest and refined wheat they are almost the sim in the similar range again fiber content is very good for all the millets refined wheat is a low proso being an exception proso is sli it contains slightly less fiber than other millets but yes it has a very good amino acid profile and the glycemic index the glycemic load of proso millet is not very high uh, next slide please so here for calcium when we have a look finger millet that is uh, nachni or ragi is the highest whereas the other millets do contain calcium and milled rice does not really uh, we cannot uh, say that it contains calcium again iron is highest in bajra all the millets do have they are good uh, good sources of uh, iron whereas milled rice is again not very high in iron content also millets are good sources of uh, carotene beta carotene whereas milled rice does not contain carotenes uh, next slide please these are some indian names of the uh, millets if you can see so just if we can have uh, it in the chat box can you tell me what millet is this can you recognize this let's have a little quiz is it visible can people make out is it visible so can we have some thing uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. some answers in the chat box yeah just started answering the first answer by umesh bodke from ihm goa he says it is podo millet uh this is jawar it's sorghum okay. let us try this one is it visible should i take it behind and take it a bit behind are we having the answers not yet bajra it is done again mr umesh bajra yes that's right is it clear the very small grains do we have any answer not yet ma'am i'll give a hint we'll be seeing this grain prepared in the households uh, very uh, regularly now for the next 10 days should i give the answer that's proso millet we make it during the fasts okay this one is it visible do we have any answers no not yet ma'am okay Problem. We'll move ahead. I'll give out the answer. This is fox tail. So, oh, Jaswinder Kaur mentioned it is a uh, pearl millet. It may be pearl millet, but yeah, you answer. Okay. This is this is fox tail. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, millet being an old concept yet we call it the next generation smart food there are various reasons so health benefits of millets include uh, it being anti diabetic uh, it having anti diabetic effect uh, why do we say that anti it has an anti diabetic uh, effect especially in the type 2 people because the amino acid profile is great uh, the fiber it contains is uh, the fiber it has it is prebiotic it is known as prebiotic and uh, it helps in uh, the good bacteria uh, to flourish in our gut 
and also the fiber in it binds to the stu uh, stools and helps in regu uh, regularizing our bowel habits. And it has a very good impact on our blood sugar levels. So hence it uh, helps us reducing the, controlling the blood sugar level and reducing the HBLC1 in diabetic patients. It also prevents the onset of cancer, especially uh, it is very effective, millets are very effective in uh, colon cancers. It prevents the onset of colon cancers because of the prebiotic fibers in it. It has protective, um, it is protective against heart diseases. This is because of its, again, fiber content and minerals and uh, minerals like magnesium, vanadium, selenium, which are also helpful with diabetics. They are very important minerals in diabetes. The same thing, uh, the mineral profile, due to this mineral profile, it is it has a very good effect on neurological health. Again, millet also lowers the bad cholesterol for it reduces the bile, excessive bile, uh, ex um, excessive bile juice, uh, release of excessive bile juice, I'm sorry. And it also helps in optimizing the kidney, liver, and immune system. Due to the fiber content and uh, the uh, vitamin profile, it also prevents the constipation and IB IBS, it helps in IBS. It aids in reducing the high BP because of the vasodilation effect of the uh, minerals and the amino acids. So India being the diabetic capital now, uh, millets have a great role to play in helping us out of this problem. So there have been a lot of studies and researches with millets and diabetes. So let us have a few, um, let us have a look at few studies. India has, uh, can I have the next slide please? India, along with a university in uh, UK, uh, reviewed, had uh, published a review article. They uh, reviewed around 65 researchers on millets and diabetes. And uh, we have chosen a few to have a look at it. So let us see the conclusion of few researchers here. So there was a study which stated that there are evidences that millets support many properties, making it good dietary options for diabetics that here uh, mice were diabetic mice were used for the research and within three weeks they could find that uh, the mice had increased in their insulin sensitivity they had reduced blood glucose levels and their adiponectin levels which has an important role to play in uh, the fat deposition and high uh, density lipoprotein, that is your HDL, was increased within a small time frame of three weeks. Next slide, please. Another research uh, compared different grains and millets, and they concluded that millets were high in nutritional content and they were gluten free and had low GI uh, index. They also mentioned that it is, uh, it is helpful in prevention of many human diseases such as type 2 diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, neurodegenerative diseases. Again, gluten-free, we've been hearing about it. After Miss Universe did, uh, when she said that she had uh, gluten intolerance and that she had um, celiac disease. So a lot of people were alarmed and we uh, there was a it is said that there were maximum uh, searches for gluten uh, intolerance on google those few days so what is really gluten gluten is a prolamine which uh, prolamine is amino acids ha uh, having a side connecting to the uh, carbohydrate of the grain so it is like an attaching bonding uh, between the carbohydrate and the protein part of a grain so here in uh, wheat, a lot of people are uh, finding uh, they cannot tolerate that. It is giving reactions to people. It, their GI system is not tolerating. And this has been increased after the green revolution when genetically modified uh, seeds were used. It has been seen that the prevalence of gluten intolerance and gluten allergies have been maximum after that. So maybe there are a lot of researches going on about that. So uh, let's see the next research. The next research uh, said that, found that, uh, the previous one, please. The previous research, it said that uh, 
found that uh, millets were high in leucine and uh, lysine has not been mentioned, but yes, they do contain lysine again, which is essential amino acid. And these essential amino acids have very important function in maintaining our metabolism, cellular reactions in our body and uh, muscle synthesis. So hence, millets are a great source of these essential amino acids as well. Hence, that is the reason why we say it has a very good amino acid profile and helps in the muscle synthesis. Uh, next slide, slide, please. Another research um, which claimed that uh, millets have anti-diabetic properties, uh, they tried, uh, they fed foxtail millet for 90 days, that's around three months. And uh, they did have uh, uh, another elements to, uh, in their diet, in the patient's diets. That is, they, uh, along with the foxtail millet, they did have black split gram and spice mix, mainly uh, which had cinnamon in that. So within three months, they uh, did see uh, improved glycemic control in the patients and reduction of uh, triglycerides uh, and low density lipoproteins which had a very good effect on the cardio health. Another uh, research used only finger millet, that is nachni. So they fed a uh, finger millet to these uh, diabetic mice and they found that it had, uh, it reduced the uh, cataract, subcapular cataract in the mice only with the finger millet seed coat. And uh, it reduced the hypercholesteremia and triglycerides associated with the diabetes. Two studies from the same group on proso millet and foxtail millet may, uh, concluded that with a mixture of their respective protein fraction, that is isolated protein was used for uh, this study. It improved the HDL co uh, concentration, that is your good cholesterol and reduce the insulin plasma uh, reduce insulin and plasma glucose concentration. So uh, this was something important that they use isolated protein fraction because the protein fraction in the millets is very sensitive. It is very sensitive to processing and cooking. Hence, the cooking and uh, processing becomes very important when it comes to millets. Next slide, please. So uh, the key points of this presentation Millets are highly nutritious foods with high fiber, vitamins, minerals, good amino acid profile, and slow digesting starch, antioxidant activity, and gluten-free. Slow digesting starch, uh, basically, let me just uh, give you a little detail about this. Slow digesting starches are the starches which are released very slowly in your blood and very gradually. They do not have a sharp drop in your blood glucose levels. Whereas rapid digesting starches, drop, increase rapidly and drop rapidly. So definitely a slow digesting starch in the food is desirable. Uh, millets contain beneficial properties towards managing diabetes, cancer, constipation, IBS, obesity, and many other metabolic disorders. They need to be properly processed and cooked for the nutrients to be bioavailable. Millets are the answer to food security due to their ease in cultivation, resistance to climate change, and we, uh, they require very less water to grow. Their nutritional uh, profile is excellent and can be used in various recipes. They are simply versatile. Millets hold the key to the well-being of those who suffer from those of that risk of metabolic diseases. Hence, they should be incorporated on a regular basis. More research must be done in establishing the benefit and method of deployment of these benefits in combating the global rise in tide of diabetes and other diseases. Also, a small suggestion, since uh, if you are incorporating these millets, you are on, you are having, you never had millets before and you're trying to incorporate these millets, I would suggest that go very gradually from once to twice, once or twice a week and also increase your water intake and then gradually ha uh, have it on regular basis. So that was a small nutrition tip. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. It was an eye-opening session. Uh, people, the questions will be answered at the later part of the PPT. Once the presentation is over, we'll answer all the questions.
as i was saying ma'am the session was very eye opening you mentioned a lot of benefits of having millets which i honestly speaking i was not aware of uh, i would certainly start adding millets into my diet uh, with that said that being said i would like to invite our next speaker who is chef sudhir pai he is a he is a stalwart of our industry with an experience and career which is spanning over 30 years which in, uh, wherein he has worked in numerous organizations including the leelas oberoi royal caribbean hindustan unilever and finally rising to the post of the executive chef at the holiday inn mumbai over the years chef has also been a founding member of the western indian culinary association after working for so many years in the industry chef has decided to guide the future generation of hoteliers and hence he has started his own fnb consultancy agency uh, where chef welcome to the <coughs> webinar and thank you for giving us your valuable time uh thank you um all to having me here uh, it's great uh, uh, to come back to the institute i am a student of ihm i passed out in 1984 so it, i am always happy to be associated with the uh, with the catering college and uh, millets is of course a great subject and uh, Uh, I am very happy that uh, IITM has taken an initiative uh, about this, uh, getting this information to the students because it is uh, very important. There's a lot of information available uh, on the internet and all around on the digital platform. But end of the day, how you apply it to your guests, to yourself, how you include it in your diets on your menus, uh, which is uh, very important. so uh, there's so much uh, uh, been spoken about uh, the health benefits of millet by my previous speaker and uh, it's so important but as a chef from the perspective of a chef how you can imbibe that into our menus and uh, how you can do if it for yourself at home uh, which is very important uh, next slide please uh so basically i am talking from the perspective of how you are going to use the millets there are two types of millets uh, one is called naked grains and another one is husk grains the naked grains are millets devoid of the tough indigestible husk namely ragi jowar and bajra which is easy to use they don't require processing after their harvest and then can be consumed right after cleaning uh, so they are significantly cultivated the lot of usage is there by default uh, our people in maharashtra and other places were using these bhakris and they were healthy people you know by default but with the difficulty of with maida coming in with the refined flour coming in people getting used to soft rotis lot of marketing on pulkas and soft things the millets taken a back seat you know so we're talking about softness in the in the breads and everything we eat so the millets had taken a back seat but by default it was part of our indian meal now husk grains what are husk grains they are fox tail millets little millets kodo millets okay these millets are very very important for they are much more uh, health benefits and they have uh, they are husk so it's difficult to use them okay in terms of cooking so because they consist of indigestible seed coat that that has to be removed before consumption the processor uh, the processing was earlier done by hand but now uh, it is done mechanically and hence it was earlier less popular but now if you go on to the digital platforms in every you see all types of millets in various forms there so many companies marketing it you know and only and the recipe contest you know i go to everything big basket and everywhere you see millets millets all all around okay so there are millets in the form of instant use also so sometimes there are a lot of false information the millet uh, noodles the millet upma everything ready made so it is better that you buy the original grains and you cook yourself to get the right benefits next slide next slide please uh so what is how how do you cook millet now millet cooking is slightly demanding although not that difficult because we are used to cooking with other type of stuff so it's slightly demanding so one need to get used to millet if you start working on the millet with the kitchens you will understand uh, you know easily come out with lot of innovative recipes you know uh, so you need to understand that millet is a thirsty grain okay it almost quadruples in size when it cooks okay it's not like wheat or anything it 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 uh, it it it, it, it uh, quadruples four times its size if you deprive it of liquid 
result will be a gritty dry and pasty pot of food for example if you want to make a bhakri you know like how gluten gluten is you put normal water and you make a dough and you can make chapati fulka bread but when it comes to millet dough formation is not there so it is important that you soak the grain and generally when you make bhakri it's lukewarm water you add a lukewarm water and you cover it and for about 1 hour or so and then you knead it okay so hydrating is very important similarly if you are if you are using the whole grains the whole grains have to be soaked at least 8 to 12 hours and then you can grind it and then you can use use it in idlis or dosas or various items uh, you get a, and if you want to use it whole like quinoa if you want to use it whole uh, you can just soak it for about 6 hours boil it and use it for salad so you get a bowl of fluffy grains that is a texture somewhere between mashed potato and pasta so easy you take any sort of a millet uh, soak it for 6 to 8 hours uh, then you boil it with just enough water and uh, salt and you can use it into various different combination you can eat millet like you eat rice or a main dish or a side dish or you can add it even to your salads and other meals so there are various once you start working with the millets in the kitchen you can understand how the whole grains can be used how can, how you can coarsely grind it and you can use it you know how you can in a powder format how you can use it so various usages can be there next slide please uh, what can you cook you can cook almost anything with millet like you can do a normal foxtail millet upma just treat it the only difference is you need to soak the grains okay uh, and then the whole process is like upma the porridge is the easiest thing to make you know you, you can have uh, coarsely ground soap you can saute it in olive oil and butter a little bit of garlic herbs okay uh, you can make a ragi idli and a ragi dosa you need not make a pure millet dosa or idli because sometimes what happens there are two types of guests who who comes into hotels and restaurants one are who are who are gluten intolerant who are very strictly uh, strictly you know they eat only millets so who are nutritious you want to go for nutritious food another type of guests are the guests who are regular guests but yet they want to try something which is healthy and something which is nutritious so what we do is we use the regular dosa batter and in that we add ragi powder we make a ragi dosa you can add any millet into a normal dosa powder a little bit of it so that at least the consumption of millet is there and millet is start uh, you can start using them in your in your various uh, meals so like that you can make ragi dosa ragi uh, jawar dosa you can even do a chila you can replace the besan with that and use a, uh, do a chila uh, like uh, my earlier speaker said sama ke chawal varaitsa bhat like maharashtrians we make a varaitsa bhat or a dhokla uh, it is fantastic and you, know, you can make it nicely flavored you can do some continental herbs with it uh, i even do a oats and this is a regular one at home oats and buckwheat pancake now buckwheat and oats is also fantastic uh, you can do a millet muruku like how we do chakli uh, regular chakli you can add the millets into it and you can do chakli uh, you can also do lasagna made with millet flour okay uh, sometimes i also use in my white sauces i use some jawari flour you know almost obviously you won't, won't get it very white but uh, you are 100% sure that you are eating healthy instead of eating the bechamel or a white sauce you can do a millet based pizza now here it is a challenge because it's very difficult to get the dough so you can add a little bit of atta in a millet and uh, you can make a pizza base you can make a millet pilaf like a vegetable pilaf you can use any type of millet soak it for 6 hours uh, cook it then give it a dum along with the garam masala and vegetables then you can make a tasty millet khichdis okay these are fantastic uh, very easy you can combine with it with dal uh that will also come out fantastic you can do a good plating along with that you can do a fried rice style of stuff with little bit of soya sauce vegetables and garlic and toss it up you can do a jawari bakri bajra bakri okay and bakris are also in maharashtra it is done differently in the south they also make like a dosa batter you know and they still call it a bakri you can make salad uh, different type of salads with millet where the millets are only about 20% of the composition like the picture on top the other parts are all vegetables and little bit of millet so it becomes very interesting next slide please so basically i think uh, what is important is you to understand as a responsible chef when you get into any food industry whether hotels restaurants cloud kitchens most important is the chefs are the people who who influence uh, healthy eating to the general population so what is most important is strive for nutrition 
chefs have a responsibility to create delicious food yes that is the first responsibility but keeping in mind uh, you need to push yourself for the creativity okay and we have a responsibility to create food that we put feel to our families if we are serving the food to the guest we make sure that our, even our families and myself as individual i should be comfortable eating that food food needs to nourish and sustain while it may seem a challenge to balance flavor and nutrition two chefs accept the responsibility and willing to take on that challenge you know like i said uh, when you start working with uh, like we when we started making jawari bread the whole texture na people were people were comparing it to the regular bread and were complaining that uh, why is the textures are not right okay we were constantly innovating on our own recipes and uh, so obviously you will not get the texture of soft texture like a maida bread but when you educate the people the guests that why this is important how differently you can eat it you know like in germany there are so many breads full of seeds they are not soft but they are nice and they have a nice texture you just put a little bit of cream cheese so people started appreciating so how we market our millet products on a buffet we'll always have a small tag talking about that millet explaining our guests of what the difference of the millet so that there are no complaints in fact guests start appreciating it and there's a lot of demand of those products on other environment good food should be a right and not a privilege so whoever guest comes to you there are different age groups there are people with different type of uh, diseases and ailments so there are a lot of travelers who have a lot of issues uh, I, let me share you one uh, one of my uh, experience i had about last year during lockdown i went to a five star hotel i stayed there and i had some shoot and i used to come late in the night and you won't believe uh, it was a branded hotel i won't name the brand uh they were not aware you know what is gluten free so when i asked for gluten free at 11 o'clock in the night uh, the room service assistant some manager or captain said that uh, they offered me pasta burger i said the person so i, I would have rather eaten outside and come so i was believe me there was no meal eventually i ended up eating a salad at 11:30 because i thought it was very safe during the covid time to come in a five star hotel and ask for something like that but the next morning they were all waiting for me because uh, i was very angry in the buffet so can anybody suggest that there was such some normal thing like missi ki roti missi ki roti was gluten free so what is important to understand is uh, what is the type of guest requirement how you can work with this millets what because if there is a lot of demand people are asking there are people the guests who are more knowledgeable than the chefs and the cooks and the people so as a person of the food industry you should be aware of everything and how you can cook what time of the day you are what are the effects you know so that is very important but guests is already educated with all the digital information with all the google they have more information for us so as a chef it is our responsibility that we educate ourselves and we start innovating and work on these products so every everybody deserves good food next slide millets are getting importance okay a uh, booming interest in organic healthy and nutritious diets okay uh, so there are people who are going like earlier said the eating habits are changing people want to balance taste but with a bit of health caution there are people who are absolutely going for nutritious food and there are people who are wanting to have a health caution in everything they eat high percentage of guests asking diabetic friendly meals the diabetic uh, 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 just excuse me a minute is somebody knocking on the door just excuse me sorry for that this happens when you sit at home and do a conference <laughs> okay sorry for that so like i was saying uh, there's a high percentage of uh, diabetic guests you know almost uh, uh, india is a capital of diabetes you can imagine the demand of food whether in hotels restaurant cloud kitchens or requirement of food so you need to understand what type of food and how these grains work uh, there are a lot of companies in fact about 2 years back i attended a uh, company seminar called inner being you know you see they have they have all ready made uh, stuff like they have uh, 
stuff with upma they have all the grains they have a lot of waffles there are a lot of pancakes all made with millets but of course they are expensive so when you have a knowledge of using those uh, millets yourself it is very easy bringing back the forgotten hero of the kitchen like i earlier said millet was by default of uh, is there was there an indian meal our farmers it was a staple food but now people forgot in the 80s it went back you know then we went to more of maida maida a lot of marketing with lot top companies of using atta whole wheat atta and millet sugar back seed so millets were under underrated superfoods so now not anymore traditional dishes are getting popular if you see now hotels if you go on instagram page and if you see all the foreign chefs everybody is using all our traditional food maybe they are serving methods or the styles are different but our traditional dishes are getting more and more popular and millets also come from there restaurant launching special millet based dishes and festival if you just go and see google there are restaurants uh, uh, who are already operating at least once in a year they have a millet based festival shopping portals are full of millet based products you know there's a even i was surprised i went to dmart there's an entire entire uh, section of millets okay so millet is becoming highly popular so it is high time that as a chef as a as a as a person from the industry you need to understand how to use them next slide please Uh, so scope to modernize millet based food so here whoever takes the lead you know very soon you might feel you might see there there are chefs master chefs who are coming out with the uh, millet based restaurants it gives a chance to modern era chef to curate new millet category menu you know you things like risotto and all all the foreign and western things you can actually concoct or curate with millets our style of food using our our uh, indian regional cuisines our methodology of cooking our flavors so millet is something which you can really curate new menus good good alternative for people who are gluten intolerant support local farmers who are growing lesser known millets now if you if you understand that growing of millets for the farmers take lesser time it requires lesser water okay lot of variety of information is easily available it is very easy to modify traditional recipes by using millet as an alternative you know every for example you pick up any indian recipe and you can start using millet for example if you using making halim halim from uh, hyderabad you just replace the wheat and you introduce a millet you will get fantastic halim you replace and you try and take a recipe you don't have to innovate just pick a recipe and see what are the two ingredients i can replace with millet and you will get it uraka there's a new recipe you'll come out with next slide please yeah so uh, now uh, uh, lastly i think uh, last year ifka ifka is the mother body of chef the uh, indian federation of chefs association they are already uh, they have already uh, having uh, working with the government they are coming up with a millet based recipe book okay so i am part of the western india chefs association so we we spread the information among the hotels chef to share recipes so eventually it bound with lot of information with the lot of scientists talking about millet so the whole world the government is uh, taking an entire uh, hand the ministry is rolling out a program called nutri cereals under the national food security mission so increase of output of millets as well as indigenous little millets so uh, very few people know about little millets so a lot of encouragement by the government the year 2023 will be observed as the international year of millets central research on self self life enhancements now when people start using it more there's a lot of food technologists working on how to process it how the self life can be increased how to promote production of millet crops increase the area of cultivation already the millet farmers were not doing well so how more and more farmers uh, will get interested training programs for millet startup entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs who can come out and start up or ready to cook and ready to eat millet food right from millet wafers to millet muruku to millet upma to millet noodles so you will see in the next 5 years the market flooded with millets and uh, as a chef you need to be aware like in a fresh kitchen or in a ready to eat kitchen what are the type of things you can get educated and how you can uh, get involved in the subject affordable technologies made available for processing millets there are special machines which uh, people are working on to make uh, millets processing easier export opportunities for millet based on that there's a normal uh, forum which is created where a normal export you know all the all the all the manufacturers can come together and the government can create opportunities for them so uh, this is the one from the, so during the union budget 2022 23 
already uh, the government has passed support will be provided for post harvest value addition enhancing domestic consumption and from branding branding millet production so what i feel from the perspective of our industry there is a lot of less knowledge millets are not being used in hotels like i said this was about last year november i was traveling in a very well branded hotel and nobody was aware so it is very very important that you should have knowledge of uh, millets because in the next two years it is going to take a, a front seat uh, in a, as a super food so so that's what what i had to say and any question you can ask thank you thank you chef for such a informative session i hope that all the participants their yeah, minds have already started working about the different dishes that can be created using millets for me the take away was halim i would for surely try making halim with millets <laughs> thank you very much so now i'd like to introduce our last speaker for the day uh, dr pavitra krishna kumar who is currently working as the project head at true elements pune which is a clean label breakfast and snack brand uh dr kumar dr pavitra has received her phd in food engineering from washington state university and she has a vast experience of working in firms in india as well as abroad what is interesting which i found out from uh, her when i was talking to her is that she was part of a project wherein they tried making vegetarian eggs and vegetarian cheese so dr pavitra over to you and i would certainly like to know more about these products from you Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you for the interesting uh, introduction. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this webinar. It was a very uh, interesting session by both Chef Kai as well as by Doctor Sarabji. Uh, there's a lot to learn from different perspectives, right? So all of us deal with food in different ways, and uh, it was interesting to see how each of us looks at it differently. So uh, I am going to try and share uh, a food science perspective to millets. So as uh, mentioned in the introduction, um, I lead the product development at a company known as True Elements in Pune. we are a clean label breakfast and snack food where we look at having foods that are made of 100% whole grain that are not using any kind of refined grains and at the same time uh, that are minimally processed so that we make sure that uh, no specific additives or chemicals or refined sugar will enter your body through our brand uh, so we are called true elements because we believe you by believe your camera is off okay one minute. Yes, it's working. Can you see me now? Uh, uh no, doctor. You are not visible. Your desktop is visible right now. your webcam is facing the desktop the laptop
uh, I think we could just continue for a minute because my Wi-Fi that's is okay, not then. working. That's okay. That's okay, then. okay, let's just continue this. We're very sorry. Uh, so yeah, we are known as true elements because we believe in being 100% uh, true so that when you purchase a product of ours, you will know exactly what goes into it and how much of it goes into it. Uh, so that is also one of our biggest strengths. So primarily, at true elements, our products are made either from oats or from uh, millets, um, where I would say at, le at least um, so 50 to 60 percent of our products are made completely from millets. Uh, and uh, that's how we've been able to learn about trying to convert these millets into packaged uh, food products which will offer convenience, taste, health, and at the same time will not compromise on the nutrition part of it as well. Um, next slide, please. So as uh, Sarabjeet and Chef Pai have explained, millets definitely play a very important role in all our diets. So primarily millets are these very small cereal grains that are uh, naturally high in fiber, protein, calcium, antioxidants, and uh, they have a gluten-free nature. So they naturally do not come with the gluten uh, protein in them. Uh, also, these millets are very resistant to extreme weather conditions, drought, pest. So as a result of which you do not really need to have a lot of chemicals, fertilizers, or you do not need to have pesticides in order to cultivate millets in the farm. That kind of enables them to be naturally organic. There's not much um, intense chemical effort that needs to go into cultivating millets. And if you look at the size of millets, they have, although they're very small, they have a very tough exterior, you know. Uh, that's something very uh, interesting as well as challenging to work with millets. So this very small size and with this very tough exterior uh, helps these millets to survive uh, any condition, excess water, excess heat, very less water, too much of, uh, you know, too much humidity, a lot of pests in the field and things like that. So that's also an interesting um, uh, thing about millets. So going forward at the way at which our planet is surviving in the background of global warming, in the background of, you know, all these other issues that we have, um, I think millets are definitely a solution to our uh, present crisis, present green crisis that we'll be facing. Uh, so traditionally, millets have definitely been uh, consumed over la long periods of time in different regions, known by different local names and uh, different ways of pr getting processed and converted into traditional forms for food. For example, there's, there are dishes made out of ragi in Karnataka, a lot of them, a lot of very interesting ones like the ragi mutte, the the ragi kanji and so on and we also have the bhakri in maharashtra uh, made out of jowar but uh, eventually when the green revolution started rice and wheat kind of took over a big uh, uh, big predominance and that has led to millets getting washed out from our traditional agriculture farmers suffering and you know all of us becoming unaware with generations as they pass even today in india if you go to tier two tier three tier four cities you will definitely have more awareness about millets. They may not know the word millet per se, or they may not be aware of the names in English, but they definitely will know about the health benefits, about how they consume, and how can they be included in our diet. It's the tier one cities that are slowly waking up to the millet revolution, I would say. So since it really uh, takes care of a lot of these agriculture issues, weather issues that we're facing, climate change, uh, they're definitely an answer to the future. Next slide, please. Uh, so these are different millets that are found in India. Jawar, Bajra, Rajkira, they all take up a lot of predominance if you look at our uh, cultivation in the, throughout the country. What is important is that we be aware of the local names in different places, in different languages. And then that helps us associate easily with the particular millet. So if I keep talking about sorghum, 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 association is a little less for some of us. If I would say a jowar, then, you know, traditionally jowar might have been a solution to anemia in a lot of places. Uh, ragi is a solution to calcium deficiency in a lot of places. So uh, ragi is uh, naturally in Hindi, finger millet in English and so on. So that's how uh, we kind of, hit the association right as and when we try to uh, become more aware of the local names of these minutes. Next slide, please. So these are some of the interesting health benefits of millets. 
uh, way can we put them to better use? For example, if we are choosing to follow, say, a vegan diet for a particular week of the month or choosing to adopt a vegan lifestyle throughout our lives for our own reasons, or if I if if for certain medical reason I have to quit consuming milk uh, as advised by the doctor, I cannot consume milk for an X Y Z period of time because of uh, you know a tablet that I'm taking, a treatment that I'm undergoing, and things uh, like that. Then uh, it would always be a good idea to to have more say ragi in the diet. Ragi is a very good source of calcium, so that way your body is not completely deprived of. Uh, calcium consumption is still there so your grains can uh, help uh, replace these different animal sources that we are trying to eliminate from our diet although not on a one-to-one -one basis i wouldn't say that every nutrient that the milk has is present in uh, ragi but uh, yeah these can definitely help us uh, to take care of our bodies in better ways now jowar is a very good source of iron for somebody fighting anemia this can be uh, included more in the diet and so on. And the other thing that we need to really remember about millets is some of them heat up our body and some of them cool our bodies. So it's really important to be aware of the weather conditions or the place uh, in which these millets are cultivated. And in turn, what happens if you consume too much of them during the summers or too much of them during the winters. So this is very important to be aware. And uh, if you are going forward to have more millets in your diet, uh, it really matters that you read read up really well about them and you are aware of how to cook them. As Chef Fai clearly mentioned, the entire basis of uh, using millets results in, uh, starts from, you know, how do you process them? How do you cook them? Or how do you start consuming them? Are you completely removing out a lot of rice and wheat from your diet and going for a 100% replacement? Then in that case, since these millets are really, really dense and rich in nutrients and things like that, Try not to overload your body. Be very aware of portion sizes. Be aware of, you know, what time of the day you're consuming them and how are you cooking them and so on. Next slide, please. So, yeah, there are different consumption forms to millets. Uh, so if you are somebody who is trying to develop a product in your millets and uh, put it in a package form and sell it to customers like how we are doing it, to add to the convenience in their lives, to add to variety in their lives, and at the same time without looking at compromising their health or their taste. Uh, you could try to approach the use of millets with a millet flour, uh, which is some, you how, how you flour the jowar and you make bhakris of it, right? Or you could look at using millet raga. Millet raga is basically uh, millets broken out of very tiny grid like pieces that uh, start to behave very similar to the rava medium refined meat. So you uh, today in the market, you do find brands selling a jowar rava or a foxtail rava uh, in package form. So that could be a good starting point because these aren't uh, grains that you could actually pulse them in your blender right away. Not all of them are you know friendly with the equipment we have in our kitchen. So if you haven't processed them the right way before you start cooking, it is not going to digest well in your body and you will also are going to have a lot of side or you could look at purchasing millet flakes. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, brands sell millet flakes and just plain flakes. Then you could have uh, made them into a poha form, into something like a corn flake, how you eat them with milk, or you could actually, you know, have a sweetened version, a salted version, uh, make some deserts out of it, make some uh, bars out of it at home and things like that. So if you are somebody who's willing to step into the kitchen and do some experiments with millets, then you do have a good starting point for you to see, you know, if you enjoy cooking with the millets, okay, then these can be good forms for you to start with. Or you do not know how to process them right, then this is again a good uh, starting point. Um, yeah, but as uh, Chef Pioli mentioned, there are a lot of brands too that end up mixing a little amount of millets in their entire combination, and then they would call it, say, a millet of uh, No, so uh, when uh, we at few elements make something like a, like a millet of it should have only millets, and we do not want to have a refined grain there, like a semolina or a rava, play, uh, you know, playing a little part of it because uh, then that doesn't serve the whole purpose of trying to have more millets in your diet. And um, you can uh, either start exploring a traditional recipe or you can start looking. Pavitra, are you there?
that lies in having them processed right, uh, which does require a lot of a little bit of reading and you know informing yourself very clearly. Especially if you're going to make something that's innovative or that's it, that's not a traditional recipe. And uh, sometimes these minutes can tend to leave a tiny off note in the product. Like if you consume, say, uh, a shake made out of fatty, you'll clearly know that the shake has fatty in it. It has uh, a taste that most of us may not be really familiar with. Uh, at the same time, you know, it may not leave a very pleasant experience upon consumption. So how do you offset that uh, taste that comes out from using meat? This is something that's very important that us as food scientists as well as chefs need to be aware of. Uh, you know, uh, what and what would go well and what and what would not go well. For example, ragi flour is a very uh, characteristic grainy taste that can just coat on your tongue and it wouldn't let you taste anything else once you've had a, had a, a sip of a glass of ragi shake. So what do you really do and what kind of um, other uh, coarse, nutty stuff you can put there that can help you experience that, you know, uh, just to elevate the whole experience. Because consuming products with millets need not be seen as a punishment. It may not be something like, you know, okay, uh, refined wheat is bad for my health, millets are good for my health, so I'll just force it down the throat, however it is. Uh, that isn't the purpose of food, because food also plays a very important psychological role in all our lives. We definitely need our taste, we need our sensory um, buds to get activated, we need to remember experiences. We have associations with food in terms of a social activity, in terms of a cultural activity. And, you know, we need to enjoy uh, the, the meals that we have, right? So trying to understand how well minutes go with other ingredients in a particular product, how do they go well with other flavors in a particular product? Will you really be able to get the complete flavor experience when you consume something with minutes or will you not? If you will not, then how do you go forward to try to make it a subtle and at the same time very um, interesting experience of consuming something made out of minutes. So these are very important points to be remembered uh, when we want to, you know, um, consume millets without compromising on the health, the taste, and the experience. Next slide, please. So uh, certain notes and pointers, I'm sure the speakers prior to me have definitely shared the uh, a lot of these points. Um, so yeah, we should start exploring our history more and more. These aren't foreign to our country or to our uh, way of consumption or to our evolution for that matter. We might even end up finding out some very uh, hyper-local recipes with a lot of millets or, you know, uh, possibly something that we, did, we didn't even realize can be done. So it could lead to a lot of uh, learning that way. Um, the, the best part about millets is you can go as regional as possible. Uh, so if you have a Joar flat, try making a half of it. If you have a ragi flat, try making a ragi mude or a, or a kuri hitu, which is a sprouted ragi flat that is then made into porridge and things like that. Uh, that's also an interesting way to inculcate millets because when you go the regional route, you will never go wrong. But yeah, all of us want to be creative and innovative with the dishes that we make. And they can be taken off as uh, fun inspirations for us to start exploring millets. And uh, yeah, keep reading as much and make sure you have the right source of information in your head when it comes to the list because with this being a keyword, being a buzz all over the place, we shouldn't end up getting a lot of misinformation. And today with a lot of social media exposure, it's becoming very easy to learn wrong things and very tough to unlearn and put the right things back in your head. Um, and then that will help us experiment uh, well. The more we start making products out of millets, the more our ideas would start opening up and, you know, Sometimes millets can be very good functional ingredients when you're trying to make a product. For example, a millet flour, like a ragi flour, you know, or a, or a jowar flour can help for uh, a masala or a coating stick easily to the surface of nuts. That's something that we observed when we were doing some uh, stuff in the lab. That, uh, oh, I just want some additional, uh, say, spices to be coated onto nuts. And then a fun barrier there was millet flour. Uh, so far, a lot of companies were getting into starches and rice flour. But millet flour uh, was, you know, helping, in fact, helping retain the spice levels at the same levels that we wanted. So these are all some fun things that people do with millets. Uh, they're definitely nutritional. They are medicinal. When you say food is medicine, medicine is food, uh, millets are definitely there in that statement. Uh, they're very tasty. They can be healthy. And, you know, uh, it can be a smart choice to have millets in your diet. Uh, it need not be only for the health conscious. It's for, it's for everybody. So yeah, uh, let's all try to 
uh, learn more about this uh, fun brain that nature has given us and uh, you know make better products for the planet thank you thank you dr pavitra for a illuminating session the biggest take away from that session was that uh, people say that millets are healthy but it does not mean that you overfeed yourself on millets i believe excess of anything is not good for you so you should have some everything should be had within millets i would like to thank all the speakers the panel members and uh, the participants if you have any questions you can please post them into the chat box at this point uh sarajit ma'am there's a question for you yes uh what is plasma glucose reduction and what does uh, this impact and how okay plasma glucose is nothing but your blood glucose level uh, the time you eat something it, the food has the potential to increase the, your blood sugar level by absorbing the sugars in the food and that's your plasma the normal regular blood test what we do blood glucose that's our plasma uh, glucose and what was the second half of the question please uh how does it affect you amol sir yeah uh, could you uh, just uh, i'll read it again i'll read the question again to you yes please uh Thanks. what does this impact and how okay it's uh, it's the blood sugar level as i uh, mentioned and uh, blood having blood sugar levels in the range is very important otherwise if it gets deranged one is termed as diabetic it uh, affects our entire system if you have a lot of uh, free blood sugar circulating in your system it affects your cardiovascular that it affects your arteries and veins it affects your cardiovascular health it affects your other hormones the pancreas are affected so it is very important to keep a check on your blood sugar levels i hope uh, i've answered that yes it helps i hope uh so we have a surprise for you students and uh, all the panel members a very senior faculty of our college uh, Ma Ma chef mugda khare would like to share her experience of consuming millets or incorporating millets in her diet <coughs> Good afternoon, all of you. Can you hear me, all of you? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Sarabji. Sarabji, I'm an uh, old student, I can say, and I would like to share one experience of, of I mean, mine that I had hit my toe in 2018, and the doctors had predicted that I will be back on my toes, okay, in within say uh, 11 to 12 months. but when i met sarabji she asked me being a friend and a dietitian she asked me to completely cut down the whole wheat flour and go on the millets so i started eating millets that is jowar ka bhakri ragi ka bhakri and surprisingly i was on my toes okay back to normal life in within 5 to 6 months and now i can proudly say that my rice is in my house the rice is replaced by vari vari is that uh, wild rice okay normal rava is replaced by the jowar rava you get jowar rava in the market and whole wheat flour is completely replaced by jowar ragi flour bajra flour and all these things. like first it used to be like roti every day and bhakri sometimes but it is now it is the millets every day and roti sometimes uh as chef sudhir said that international year of millets 2023 is announced so we all the uh, faculties of ache mumbai we are doing lots of r and d on the recipes and we will be proud to announce that we will be coming up with a book on millets very soon one more thing small thing i would like to say is when we were small we used to put that uh, fox millet i never knew that it is so nutritious we used to put it for the love birds everybody had love birds at home so we used to put that it was called as rala rala is that fox millet and now i uh, it's like very surprisingly we are doing lots and lots of recipes on fox tail millet fox tail millet okay and it is i would like to say that that millet is uh, at my experience it is the texture of that millet is amazing at the same time it is cooked also and after cooking also it is very crunchy 
so i would like to say i would like to advise my students also that please try to replace the whole wheat flour with the millets it is very very good for your health and for your sugar levels thank you thank you mukda ma'am uh i don't see any questions in the chat box participants if you have any questions please post them in the chat box netresh is asking me how do we incorporate millets in our daily routine other than bhakri i believe chef sudhir has informed this in very much detail in his ppt in his slides by the way we will be posting this uh, entire webinar on our college youtube channel as well so if anyone has missed this uh, webinar okay, you can watch this again on the college youtube channel i don't think we are getting any questions the the ppt the presentation was very very informative i would like to thank all of you again sarabjit ma'am dr pavitra chef sudhir for taking out your valuable time and uh, illuminating our students with your experience on a very very important topic of millets thank you again chef and thank you so much thank you sir yes, bye bye all the best thank you sir thank you thank you sarabjit ma'am thank you dr avitra i would like to mention one thing it was yes please it was great coming back to college though it was just virtual but it, yes. it's a pleasure and uh, i felt i i just remembered that giving presentation for my final university exams i just could recollect that and it's awesome being back to college it was just the same feeling thank you so much for having me you're most welcome Bye. Bye, sir. Bye. Oh, bye. Take care. Bye, bye. Uh, students, I am just posting the link for your attendance on the chat box. First year students, I will be posting the link in the chat box for attendance. You can fill up the attendance and then you can leave the meeting. the first year students you can fill up the attendance link the google form and then you can leave the meeting uh, all the others thank you very much for being part of this webinar and you can leave the meeting now